Hi, everyone. I'm Jackie Gardner, the NGSS TOSA for the San Jacinto Unified School District. And I'm going to show you a little bit about using the online curriculum program STEM scopes. So hopefully you've gotten your login by now and you can open up. And the first screen you see has your segments and scopes on the right. And it has your search, teacher toolbox, visual glossary, and STEM scope STEM coach in action on the other side. Your teacher toolbox gives you different resources like a pacing guide, um, the favorites of lessons that you bookmark. Um, it gives you some material list uh, planning resources. Your visual glossary shows you um, different videos and images for the different vocabulary words throughout STEM scopes. Um, some of your students might struggle with the abstract concept of something like, what is an abiotic factor? It just means non-living things. But in it, there's a picture and it goes through what is living and what's not living in the picture. And it provides you a little more background um, for students who really need that visual reinforcement. In the STEM Coach in Action, it provides you professional development, opportunities, articles, resources for you to help better your own science teaching practices. So I implore you to go and explore some of those and see, maybe you'll find a new tool that's helpful. So let's look at what would be considered the textbook. In a traditional textbook, you have units and you have chapters. In STEM scopes, you have segments and you have scopes. These segments, are the equivalent of your units, and there's four of those for every grade level. And you have your scopes, and there's different amounts per different uh, segment. You'll also notice that you have access to other grade levels. If you have an elementary account, you'll probably see kindergarten through fifth grade. If you have a middle school account, you may see middle school as well as elementary school. Use that to your advantage. You can use the content from other grade levels um, perhaps to accelerate some of your students' learning, or you can also use it for intervention if you have some students who are falling behind. So if I go into a segment, you have some information that can help you get prepared for teaching this to your class. You have your standards alignment over here on the right-hand side that will help you better understand which of the NGSS standards um, and even in some cases, which of your Common Core standards can be addressed through this unit. Um, your Common Core concepts and science and engineering practices, or your CCC and SEP, um, inventory of skills, those are checklists for you to show the mastery of each of your students. And those are really great to use for parent conference time, or if you have students who you need to map which of the skills they've mastered, those are great tools for you to use as well. So going back to the scopes, let's have a peek in one of the scopes. You'll notice in the scopes that there are five E titled sections. This is from the five E model of, um, of learning, which is a very well scaffolded idea that progresses students through first engaging with a topic and finally ending with their own evaluation of their learning. Have they really learned something or do they need to go back and review? So the hopes are that the students will actually be the ones doing these five E's, not necessarily the teacher doing it for the students. So when we go to engage, we get activities that hook the student. It accesses their prior knowledge. It asks them what do they already know? Um, what experiences have they shared? Um, it gets them interested by showing them a video or a demonstration of something. Um, that sort of opens up the conversation so the students can start wondering, asking questions. When you go into the explore section, Students are getting a chance to really engage with the content, but they still haven't been front loaded with the definitions, with the concepts. They are exploring the phenomena itself. Um, these activities are usually hands on. So students are um, practicing the science and engineering practices. They're learning lab skills um, and they are getting that basic data and evidence to 
help support what they will learn in the explain section. So teachers are still going to share out, um, you know, the basic concepts and information, but the hope of explain really is that by the end of these activities, the students will be able to explain to you what they have learned, or they'll be able to explain to others um, the science concepts. So in here, you'll find um, picture vocabulary. These are great for um, students with processing difficulties or um, EL students. Your major activity is going to be your linking literacy. And that linking literacy is an activity that walks you through the typical textbook page, which would be your STEM Scopedia. So in a traditional textbook, you have something that, oh, I think I clicked on the Spanish one. They have a lot in Spanish as well. Here we go. Uh, in Espanol, we want, for this purpose, the English one. Um, there we go, now it's in English. Um, you do have the Spanish option for many of the activities. If you have bilingual students or students who are um, Spanish speakers at home, giving them the Stemscopedia in Spanish also gives them an opportunity to discuss this with their parents. They may not know how to translate predator and prey into Spanish, and giving them the option to find out what those words are really extends the boundaries of their learning because it's more than just at school now. Now they can share it with their parents and family as well. So these pages are the basics of learning and it gives you a few questions at the end like a typical textbook page would do um, for review but these are the great things that you can print out and send home with your students so that way they can study for the test if they are not able to log in at home next let's take you to elaborate elaborate is one of those sections that if you are able to get to it it really builds on the learning and it allows the students to apply the concepts. But if you run out of time, this is one of those sections that you might just leave for some of your accelerated students. But it does provide math connections if you wanted to do science-themed math learning um, or science-themed reading. Um, you can incorporate science into your other portions throughout the day by sneaking it in. Um, also, some other options here, career connections are great because they show students an option of where will I ever use this? Um, why am I learning this? Why is it important? Well, maybe you'll have a career that it connects to someday and you'll be able to see a plethora of different careers um, and as well as individual scientists. You notice on the right hand side over here, we have these squares that are blue and they say S. That means that when you look at it, you're seeing it in student view. When you see the orange T's, that means you're looking at it in teacher view. So if it has a student option, you can assign it to the students and the way that you see it on here will be exactly how they see it on their account. Lastly, evaluate. So in our evaluate section, there are three options. You have your claim evidence reasoning, you have your open-ended response assessment, and you have your multiple choice assessment. I'm gonna click on our claim evidence reasoning because this is a setup similar to how students will take the cast on the california science test that they will take in fifth eighth and eleventh grade um, they will be given these questions that require students to be able to manipulate a screen to be able to use different online tools and they can explain their answers using those tools. They're open-ended. They require students to make a claim, provide some evidence from whatever they read or what experience they did to support that claim, and then explain why does that evidence prove your point? So this is something that is also really great for writing as well. If you're trying to improve your expository writing in class, rather than just fictional or story writing, um, you can go through it with the students. Lastly, your intervention and acceleration show you um, some extra options, intervention for students who are falling behind, acceleration, different options for students running ahead, and I think that pretty much goes over the basics of STEM scope. So hopefully you find this helpful and
enjoy science. Have fun.